Greetings and salutations, Charlton66, Steve here, once again with another video. Uh, how's everyone doing? I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Um, I know the, the, the lockdown, the, the quarantine has been lifted in a lot of places. I've seen videos of people getting their books, going out getting comics, which is very cool. I've not been, my store's open, but I've not been there yet. Um, just, uh, just, just waiting for a little bit, you know, I know comics have come, I think they're saying the 28th or something like that, Diamond is going to start releasing the new book, so I'll go after that, uh, no, no need to be going right now, um, not too much going on, I've been doing a lot of reading, which brings me to the video, um, I was reading a bunch of books, um, some, uh, some random issues and I was, as I was putting them away I was like you know what why not just share them with people and show you what I've been reading and show you what I've been up to um the uh current situation of being in quarantine like I said us comic collectors we've got stuff we can do we just can't get our new books but now that's changed so um but before like I said before we've got a lot to do a lot to read so like I said I hope everyone's doing well um some of the stuff that I've been reading, um, this was a stack I just randomly pulled out. Uh, I won't go through all of it. Uh, maybe I will, but I won't go into it with detail because I think a lot of people have seen some of these books in their own collection or, or elsewhere. Um, but it's just what I just pulled out and, and, and decided to read. Um, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a healthy, um, eclectic stack. One of the books that book books that I'm reading now um, is the Avenger. Um, these are new stories um, called the Justice Incorporated Files. Um, got diff a bunch of different stories by different people in this book. Um, if you don't know, the Avenger is a uh, pulp hero, uh, and these are just short stories. Like I said, written by different people. There's no illustrations or anything in here. It's just straight up um, reading, which is very cool. He's one of my favorite pulp characters. And talking about pulp characters, um, I talked about Doc Savage before in my last video. I'm going to go over a couple of newer, not newer books, but add some more of his adventures to the order that they appeared in sometime during this video. So I won't labor the Doc Savage issue or situation. But I got a lot of good responses in the last video, a lot of good... Um, uh, comments and stuff which I've not answered yet I do apologize I need to answer my comments um, I've been slacking on that but um I got a lot more uh, uh, interaction more than I thought for Doc Savage so I thought that was cool one of the things that, that, I, that I read I had had this for a while but I reread it again because I like obscure characters be it Marvel or DC uh, more obscure the better uh, that's why I'm a big Charlton fan obscure books i love them in my collection i don't i'm not going for the big guns uh even though i got a lot of big gun issues in my collection i don't that's not what i, I like my focus is on obscure heroes which is one of the reasons why i like men of mystery um men of mystery have popped up on instagram people not knowing really what it is it's just a bunch of reprints from golden age um golden age characters uh, put up by bill black and it's got a lot of obscure stuff and one of my favorite characters is why i read this issue again is the hood which his coloring is not the way his costume was in the comics um he had in fact referring to my um classic fanzine um, um the collector's handbook volume four which talks about golden age characters this came out in the 60s and talks about when they first appeared and a lot of in this particular issue a lot of stuff by Don Newton before he hit pro but in this one here's the hood it looks much better here um than he did on that cover but according to this um he of course he's a Holyoke character appeared in Catman comics which I would love to get my hand on some Catman comics just for the hood character um uh, he had um, 
uh, the black hood and that, um, that it was yellow, which is the main part which he got right here. Um, his hood, cape, and boots were blue. His gloves and trunks were red. So, um, kind of like, according to that, it's kind of like off on this one. But it's a cool story. Uh, I won't belabor this issue too long because I got some books to go over. But it's it's quite nice. Um, love the splash page. Again, these are obscure Golden Age stories and characters with artwork. And it's got a reference to where it came from. Catman Comics. What issue? I don't know. But the hood is a very cool character. He had no powers. He's a Batman-like character. But I like the look. And, um, and the uh, style of the character. So, again, I reread this. Um, a blast from the past for a lot of people. Um... I watched my channel who've been around since the Eclipse years, Detectives Incorporated, which um, by Don McGregor and um, Marshall Rogers. It's a detective story, but it's real cinematic. How am I trying to say? Um, it's like cinematography, but <laughs> cinematograph. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it's set up like a movie, but it's real gritty. Um, here's one. And um, here's two for mature readers. It only came out with these two issues. I think they did a trade. I don't know for sure. I should look up in my price guide beforehand. But um, really, really cool series. I read that. Um, here's an interesting book. Um, I think everyone should have this in their collection, uh, if it, particularly if they're in the history of, of comics and stuff. Um, let me take it out of the mylar. It's called Ethnic Images in, in the Comics. It's put out by Benet Brith. Um, but it's got it's got illustrations in, in here. Um, characters from the comic book history of um, ethnic characters that appear in comic books, good or bad. Um, you know what I'm saying. Um, the stereotypes um, are here and non-stereotypes are here as well. But... Um, it's all about um, ethnic ethnic images and comics, but it's a scholarly approach to it. Um, it's not about my favorite comic book is this because of this, or you know this comic book is better because of this. It's it's a very scholarly approach about images and comic books with ethnic um, characters with ethnic backgrounds, which I think is a very cool cover. Um, the only thing wrong with it is a little chunk tore out right here. It's the only thing wrong with it. But other than that. It was a great find for a couple bucks. Uh, I recommend it. If you find it out in the wild, pick it up. Highly recommend it, um, particularly if you're into history of the medium and history of comic book characters and um, just have a more uh, fundamental knowledge of what you're talking about, you know, when you are referring to your comic books and characters and, and whatnot. Um, that was pretty good. It took me a while to read that. Um, Again, like I said, it's nothing like a, what comic book is better or anything like that. It's straight scholarly approach to the subject. Um, one of my favorite Western comics and one of my favorite radio shows of all time. One of my favorite radio shows. I collect old time radio. And one of my favorites is Tales of the Texas Rangers. And here's a nice high grade copy. This is number 14. Um, Dell. Um, but it's a great, great cover. Um, but it's a great radio show. Um, love the radio show. Love the comic. It's fun. Um, Four Color put out a bunch of issues that tell the Texas Rangers that he got his own his own series. I think that's from '54. I think. Um, another comic book I read, which is which is fun. Uh, I don't have a lot of ACG westerns, so I was happy to get this Blazing West a while back. I don't know if I ever showed this or not. But this was a good, there's a long read on this one. A lot of ACG books from the 50s are, are, um, are a long read. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I love the logo on this. 
um, oh, one of my favorite sci-fi, um, Three Strange Adventures, um, this, this was a fun book, I love the cover, the cover was striking, it's one of, this is one of the books I bought, oh, jeez, maybe 40 years ago, that I thought was a big deal, because it was one of my first 10 centers, um, but I've, I've had his book in my collection ever since, I love the cover, um, it reminded me of a Twilight Zone, or reminded me of an old sci-fi novel, so I picked it up, um, I was like 10, 11 when I picked it up, I thought it was such a big deal, I have a 10 cent comic in my collection, but I reread I re this, and this is, this is a fun book, this is Strange Adventures 128, fun, fun book, now this, I'm going to go backwards on, on this for a second, no, I'm going to show another Strange Adventures, but one of the things that came up on Instagram and someone posted, and I, I meant to look to see what it was, but one of my, one of the comics I bought, well, my cousin had it a long time ago when I first saw it, it scared the hell out of me, and then I was able to get it many years later in my collection, but this is a Joe Cuber cover, and this is what is very cool about this cover. This is how um, Earth sees the first alien spaceman who landed on planet Earth. But this is how they really look like. So it really it, it terrified me. I do remember this 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 particular issue. Um, again, when I bought it again thirty something years ago, long long time ago, I remember it and I bought it and I enjoy the stories. And again, anyone who gets from beyond the unknown knows how cool these reprints are. So again, buying it, not realizing it was really a reprint. So then I was able to find the original one that came out nothing against Gil Kane but the Joe Cuba cover is much more terrifying um this is the actual story this is Strange Adventures number 154 um great Gil Kane cover love the space suits on on, on this uh it's reminiscent of the, uh, the Cuba drew from this but his is much more terrifying I think this is much more streamlined sci-fi for its time um, but I enjoyed both of these books. I read those. Um, they're a fun read. And again, this is a, a, a two book in books. Good, I'm only at 12 minutes. I could probably finish this up here before 15. This is a good, um, two parter. If, uh, if, if you like it, consider it's got the two of the coolest Silver Age teams, Challengers of the Unknown, Doom Patrol. Outside of my beloved Metal Men, this, this is my favorite Silver Age teams. Um, Doom Patrol and Challengers of the Unknown, Eight Against Eternity, which is a very cool cover. This is Doom Patrol number 102. Great read. It's just fun stuff. Um, you know, you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to get a cool book to read it. You can get these books for under 20 bucks, and they're a cool read. You will love having them in your collection. And this is the um, Twilight of the Challengers, which is a very cool cover. This is Challengers of the Unknown, number 48, which outside of the original purple outfits, purple and white outfits, these are my favorite Challengers um, garb, so to speak. Again, that was that was a fun read. I mean, I read that probably. I pull that out probably once every other year, every year or something like that to read it. Back to the um, Golden Age Men of Mystery, um, Commando Yank, um, uh, and has Ibis in this, which I'm a big Ibis fan. Um, classic Golden Age, obscure. Heroes. If people are into the Golden Age and want to learn more about it, I highly recommend those books. Um, it has a lot of write-ups in there. Um, the Golden Age made a mystery now. It's very sporadic. It's twenty nine ninety five for I think a hundred and something pages. Um, but Bill Black puts it out, and I've said it before on my channel that it's a labor of love for him. He barely breaks even on putting these books out. Um, I think he should set up a booth at a major con, and I think all the different books on display with cool displays and banners and stuff would, would, would heighten the awareness of this title, 
but he doesn't do, he's down in Florida. Um, he doesn't do conventions or anything like that. Um, Bill Black's been in the industry doing stuff since the 60s, since um, fandom was around. But uh, he's a pretty decent artist. Um, uh, but The Golden Age Myth of Mystery is a very cool book to have. If you're really into Golden Age, you want to know about artists and characters and where they appeared, these books have it. And again, it helps you research what you want to get. Make a list of, like, I, with The Hood, I really want to buy some Catman comics just for The Hood stories. Um, I got some... Um, uh, boy comics because I'm a big fan of Microface. <laughs> I know Microface sounds like a, um, you sound like a pretty terrifying hero there. Uh, Microface and Zippo, and they both of which I've showed those comics before, which they appear in Boy Comics. I just like those stories and I like those characters, and they both appear in Boy Comics. So I was able to get some Boy Comics and enjoy enjoy those stories. But I learned about them from the um, the collector's handbook here. Which is five, four volumes. I have all four. I have them all four sitting right here because I was doing research. And um, of course, Golden Age Mid of Mystery. So I suggest you find those comic books and go nuts and have a good time with them because I guarantee you will. Here's another Golden Age Mid of Mystery. This is back when it was six ninety five. dollars um, This has the Avenger, Mr. Scarlet, Captain Flash, Black Fury, plus Daredevil vs. the Claw. It's got an awesome um, Avenger story uh, cover by Dick Ayers, which I had Dick Ayers sign it uh, right there. Um, that's the Avenger. And I got a Avenger, little Avenger character. I can't see if you can't see him, but I'm not going to get him, but I don't know if you can see him. He's right. He's right there. Little Avenger, like these little characters that someone... Had a license to them, made them like they're like Funko Pops, but not as cool, I guess. But they're still they're still neat, neat to have. And again, one of my favorite Golden Age characters because of the Golden Age Men of Mystery is Skyman. And this has a Skyman, Mr. Scarlet, and the Catman um, uh, story in it. But this has awesome. Skyman cover. Skyman in action. Alright, I'm at 17 minutes here. Alright, hope I'm not going too long for folks. Another cool story that I read. I reread because I've had this comic book for a while. Um, Brave and the Bold, number 61, Starman, which I love. The Golden Age Starman and Black Canary. Very cool issue. Nice issue to read. Another cool Strange Adventures, which is very Twilight Zone-ish. Um, this is Strange Adventures number 78. Um, great Gil Kane cover. Which I think is a very cool cover of little men coming out of a spaceship on the man's nightstand. Good stuff. Um, this has not been mentioned that much. It, a lot of people don't have this book, and I've seen it at conventions for like between fifty and hundred dollars. Um, I don't get it, but it's um, Medal of Honor. Um, then it was a special put out by Dark Horse, with the awesome Joe Kubert cover, which is a crazy cover, man. Um, I think it's the only thing Joe Kubert's ever done for Dark Horse. Had to pull out some old Charlton's. I've showed this before, but I I reread it because I like the stories. Um, it's just a comic of its time, but it's Racket Squad. This is the first issue. High, nice, high, great copy. Um, not like the you know, the covers cool, but not like the Ditko covers that would come later. Uh, that were very violent and put Racket Squad on the map as a book that everyone wanted to collect it. Uh, not even like Charlton, but if you want to get some crazy pre-code violence, um, Bracket Squad, um, some of the Ditko issues were pretty crazy. And I read um, Hot Rods Racing Card number one. I only read the Indianapolis 500, made from Indiana. 
Um, I like that story. This is the first issue. This is from 1951. Hot Rods and Racing Cars. I think it's a Jack Keller cover, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Speed Davis and Buster Camshaft. So, a lot of... It's just a fun read. Nothing to write home about, but it's, it's still cool. Lasted a long time. Hot Rods and Racing Cars lasted a, lasted a while. And last but not least, I, I was talking to Night Tiger Comics on the phone, Mike. And I talked about my danger and adventure with Ibis. This is his last Golden Age appearance. Um, this is what it looks like. But I love this cover. Look at the dude with the ray gun. The people coming off a Viking ship. Crazy stuff. Only in an Ibis comic. Yeah. I like Ibis. And his Ibis stick. All right, I'm at 20 minutes. Um, really quick before I go, um, Doc Savage installment for those who care. Um, we were up to his 10 adventures. Um, this is number 11 of his adventures, uh, but this is number 5, how Bantam put them out. Brand of the Werewolf. I should have taken these out of plastic, but I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, Brand of the Werewolf. I forgot, um, Mort Custer, I think, did the cover on this. But this is the first appearance of Pat Savage. For those who don't know, it's Doc's cousin. And when they reprinted, well, not when they reprinted, when they did newer stories, sometimes in the comic books, they'd throw her on the cover for the proverbial sex appeal and who is this woman, but that was Doc's cousin. Pat Savage. So for those who don't know, if there's a woman with Doc, it's usually Pat. Um, but she was introduced here. Great Bama cover on this, The Man Who Shook the Earth. Great James Bama cover on this. Oh. And Meteor Menace, this is number let's see, 10, 11, 12, it's number 13, but number 3 on Bantam's reprint list. This is the original printing. Um, not the pulp, but the original Bantam printing. Um, Meteor Menace. A guy named Venti. Uh, I believe that's the last name of the artwork on this cover. Not as... Not as umph. Doesn't have that appeal. Now, this is one of my favorite. I'm taking this out of the plastic real quick. Uh, I'll be out of here in a couple minutes. Um, one of my favorite covers as a kid... Uh, I still love it. It's one of my favorite um, favorite doc covers called The Monsters. And this is how the pulp was the same way. Um, James Bama just drew it from the pulp cover. But I love it. I mean, his big, huge hand getting Doc. And Doc has no fear. Just like another day at the office. That's a crazy cover. But yeah, this is the... I don't know if this is the original. 95 cents. I don't think so. This is number seven in the adventures. No, this is the fifth printing. But the original story is from 1934. But that's it. Great cover. Love it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll get to the comments, I promise. I love interacting with you guys. Um, but, uh... I do apologize for not. No, I'll put that away later. I do apologize for not answering the comments as soon as I should have, but I but I will. I won't belabor that point. I just tell everyone to stay safe, stay well, and I'll talk to you guys later. And again, hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Hit the bell um, if you haven't. But um, if you like the video, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. Anything if you want to talk about? Anything? Let me know. Um, if it's pop culture, comic books, or anything like that, I'm there. All right. Talk to you guys later.